Okay, let's pray. Father, we want to thank you now for <clears throat> fellowshipping together, loving one another. We thank you, Father, for the fruits of the Spirit manifesting in our lives. You care a lot for the body of Christ, Lord. You died for the body of Christ. So we're to take care of one another. For we are your children, your people on the earth, and you have redeemed us. You have taken us out of the kingdom of darkness and placed us into the kingdom of the Son of God. And we've been born again by the Spirit of the living God. And we thank you for that. Thank you for all that you do. And we love you, Lord, with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And I pray now for the spirit of wisdom and revelation to rest upon each and every one of us as the Word of God, as the light of the gospel shines into our hearts that we might not just hear from, from our physical ears, but we might hear what the Spirit is saying to the church with our spiritual ears. And I want to thank you for that right now. Be glorified this day, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. It's good to see everybody here today. I love to preach the Word of God. And our first scripture will be on the board. It will be... Uh, Romans chapter 1, verse 16. Romans, I love the book of Romans. I've been studying from that in the last, almost just like Frank has, he's been studying from it. And let's look at the scriptures. What we want to do is learn something. We, we want to come to church to fellowship. We want to come to church to worship God. But we want to come to church to learn how to live life, how to be an overcomer. And uh, if you don't know how to overcome, then the very thing that uh, you're trying to overcome, let me tell you something, it will overcome you. That's just the way it works. So either we will overcome it by the power of the Holy Spirit, by the power of the gospel, by knowing how to put the Word of God on every situation that comes against us, we got to know how to draw the Word of God and use it for our defense against principalities and powers. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. And sometimes the church forgets that. And that's why you have me here, to remind you that we have to fight the good fight of faith. Salvation is a free gift. These people that are going to be water baptized today, they have received a free gift. Jesus Christ came into their heart. Their spirit man was dead. But their spirit man came alive when Christ came into their spirit man. And they are now a brand new creation, the Bible says, born again. Our spirit is not overhauled. It is not fixed. It's done away with. And God gives us a brand new spirit. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, a new creation. Your spirit man, when you receive Christ, your spirit man becomes a new creation, one that never existed before, a brand new spirit man that's in tune with God. And yet we know that we have to nurture. I want to say that again. We have to nurture our spirit man. You take it in the natural. How many of you know you have to nurture your outer man? How many knows that man is a spirit, a soul, and a body? Follow me. If you don't know that, that's in the Scriptures. Get in the Word and read it. You'll find that in one spot uh, in uh, 1 Thessalonians <clears throat> chapter 5, verse 23. Spirit, soul, and body. How many has learned to nurture your outer man, your body? Let me see your hands. All right, very good. I can tell. Some of you have been doing a good job on that. If you don't, your outer man will die. How many is going to eat dinner today? I'm getting hungry myself right now. Just thinking about it. You've got to nurture your outer man if you're going to stay alive. That's simple. That's not complicated. Well, you understand that, and yet somebody will stand up in front of the body of Christ and say, you've got to nurture your inner man that's been born again by the Spirit of God. And if you don't, you'll be weak. 
you will not be able to hold up under the pressures of life. <coughs> the scripture that I'm looking for, or oh, that's good, let's read that. So for my part, I am willing and eagerly ready to preach the gospel to you also who are in Rome. Now turn to 16, verse 16. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> uh, boy. For in the gospel, for in... It changed on me, didn't it? <coughs> All right, back on 17. <laughs> okay, go back to 16, Willie. All right. For I am not ashamed of the gospel. Why, Paul? Why aren't you ashamed of it? A lot of people are ashamed of it. I remember when I first became a Christian, I started out witnessing really good. But after I got a little opposition, I didn't speak up as much as I used to, and I almost got ashamed of it. But God dealt with me. The Bible says God is working in us, make, uh, making us willing to do His good work, His good will. So I let God, I am not ashamed of the gospel. I'll walk up, I'll walk up in front of anybody, anywhere, and share the gospel with them. Are you that bold yet? God, I, look at that. There's one back there, one there, one there, one there. Good. There's one there, my wife. Be bold. Be strong. Amen? That's what the Bible says. I have so much fun in sharing the gospel with people on the street or, or at Hardee's. We've won people to Christ at Hardee's, eating our hamburger and eating those french fries, which I need to lay off, really. I mean, you know, those french fries will get you at the end. <laughs> All right. Listen, we are not to be ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power, the good news, the power. Everybody say power. power. Notice what it says. It is God's power working unto salvation. It is God's power working unto salvation. That's how you are able to gain salvation when you hear the gospel and you take the faith that God has given to us and we believe what the gospel says, then the Holy Spirit causes our inner man to be born again. You cannot cause your inner man to be born again. But as we believe, and as we believe the power of God that's in that gospel, there is power in the gospel. A lot of people just need a good pill of the gospel. I like the gospel pill. There's probably some folks in here that takes a little pill for their blood pressure. Hmm? If you don't take it, what happens? Blood pressure goes up. And if you don't take the gospel pill, you're going to go down. Can you understand a little teeny pill called a blood pressure pill, one every day? And if you don't take it, your blood pressure will go up. And I got news for you. If we don't start really taking our gospel pill every day, every day we need to take our gospel pill, you're going to be dead as a, a donut. I'm talking about a stale donut. Let me see. I got to think of something else. Dead as a, yeah, you're right. I'm glad you're preaching with me. You won't have no life in you. Oh, you'll have carnal life. But you won't have the life of God that has power. There'll be no joy in your soul. Do you realize I'm 81 years old and I have joy? I didn't get it at Walmart. I didn't even get it at Piggly Wiggly. I take my gospel pill every day. And I make sure my wife takes it. A gospel pill every day. She'll be 80 years old in April. There's two things that I feed her. Love and gospel pill. You can laugh in church. It's okay. You'll get set free. So are you taking your gospel pill? If you're not, I'm telling you what, you're sick. I love you to tell you the truth. How many goes to the doctor and you get mad at the doctor if he tells you you got cancer? Hmm? How many gets mad at the preacher if I tell you you need a gospel pill? Every day. 24-7. Say that again, Bob. Believe it will. 24-7. Take your gospel pill. My blood pressure is going up. Did you take your gospel pill? 
No. Did you take your blood pressure pill? No. Wow. It's simple. It's not complicated. How many takes their uh, blood pressure pill in the morning? All right. <laughs> I take mine. I was 80 years old. My blood pressure went up. So I'm, I'm on a gospel pill, but I'm also on a blood pressure pill. And I noticed that if I don't take that blood pressure pill, my blood pressure goes up. How in the world a little pill can cause your blood pressure to get level? Somebody explain that to me. Well, it simply goes through your bloodstream. It hits your brain, that one nerve on the left side of your face. It hits that three times, and all of a sudden your blood pressure comes even. How can the gospel of Jesus Christ keep you strong? Let's read the next verse. Oh, let's finish that one. It is God's power working unto us for deliverance from eternal death to everyone who believes with a personal trust and a confidence, surrender, and firm reliance to the Jew first, and then also to the Greek or the Gentile also. So you can't get away from it. Mama used to tell me, eat your peas. I mean, ever, all you mamas ever tell you, kid, eat your peas, eat your greens. Well, your pastor say, man, start eating some gospel lettuce. You know, lettuce is in the Bible. It says, let us go on, you know, but anyway. This is what, when pe two people sit in my office, I can tell you what their problem is. They have not been taking their blood pressure pill. I mean, they have not been taking their gospel pill. Come on, love me, church. Amen. Come on, now, love me. Did you, where you, some, some, some of you folks are thinking, I'm fussing. I'm not fussing, I'm encouraging. I know that there's life in the, there's power in the gospel. Everybody say, there's power. There's power. 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 Power in the gospel. In the gospel pill. Simple. That's the word of God. It's not the word of mere man. It is the word of God. God says. Oh, I'm a, how many believers? I mean really believers. I'm a real believer. You look at me, you're looking at a real believer. Am I the only one a real believer in this place? Some of you are not quite sure. Well, I'm here to help you, not to hinder you. Look what it says. Mm, mm, mm. For in the gospel of a righteousness which God ascribes is revealed both springing from faith and leading to faith, disclosed through the way of faith <clears throat> that arouses to more faith, that is, is written, the man who through faith is just and upright shall live and shall live by faith. Well, where do you get to faith? The Bible says God gives every man a measure of faith. You got it. You got the faith. You've got the faith. Now live by faith. That's simple. It's not complicated. You live by faith. You know, when you come to that realization of what God has promised us, number one, when we're saved, God gives us eternal life. Now, I thank God I'm not going to live throughout eternity in these bodies. Are you listening? How many wants to live throughout eternity in your body you got right now? Think about it. Always sweating, always hungry, always thirsty, always tired, always unhappy. And the older you get, the more aches and pains you get. Young people, enjoy your youth while you have it. You don't know how blessed you are. But I'm 81, but I'm blessed. Because I'll tell you the truth, I feel like I'm 19 in my spirit, but I know my body is 29. Yeah, that's right. Something like that. Anyway, it's close. 80, 81 almost. Can you understand that? I mean, I can look at her. I'm limber as a limber. Look at her. Loose as a goose. I have to be. Susan, she, uh, I mean, she'll run, she runs me all over the house all the time. Oh, your wife don't do that? 
What kind of fun do you have? <laughs> I'm serious. I'm serious. We do, the, we do the same thing when we were just got married, don't we, honey? Tell her. Give them a testimony. That's enough. Don't want to hear no more. <laughs> You don't have to be dead because you're 80 or 81. Life begins at 80. Moses didn't start his ministry until he was 80. Come on, church. There ain't no retirement for the man and woman of God. Man, who can retire with the fire in your bones? You got the word and the fire in your bones. You got to preach. You got to teach. I got to tell somebody about the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. Got to. Susan does her shopping and I do mine. I'm over there talking to this old guy. He's over there like this. I say, it's really nice to get old, isn't it? Where do you come from? Mars? No, I'm a real human being. How old are you? I'm 70. <coughs> How old are you? I'm 81. What happened? I take my vitamin pill. It's called a gospel pill. There's power. Everybody say power. 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 Where? The In the gospel of Jesus Christ. Power of life. The Zoe life that comes from God Almighty. The Bible says the word of God is medicine even to our flesh. I'm going to say that again. The Bible says the word of God is even medicine to our flesh. All right, let's move on. I want to teach you how to receive, how to receive. Now, all right, we finished that, didn't we? All right, I want you to go to 10, uh, Romans 10. Oh, boy, here we go. We're going to get rolling here now. This is good. Let's start with verse 6. Hallelujah. Everybody look at the board, but the righteousness based on faith imputed by God. Now, let's tear down the scriptures and make sure we understand. The righteous, righteousness of God is based on faith. Faith is the principle that it is imputed by God. It springs from God. It comes from God. The righteousness of God is given to us as a gift. I'm going to say that again. The righteousness of God is given to us as a gift. Imputed by God and, brought, and bringing right relationships with Him says, do not say in your heart, who will ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down. Oh, I want to get saved. Oh my goodness, I want to get saved. I want to have the righteousness of God. How can I get into heaven where Jesus is now? I heard he was resurrected and he ascended into heaven. He's seated at the right hand side of the Father. I got to get up there to Jesus to get my salvation. No, you don't. No, you don't. It's nigh thee. I said, It's nigh thee. Just like that $100 bill is nigh thee in your pocket. You're sitting on it. It's nigh thee. It's for everybody. Yeah, but I gotta, I gotta get Jesus down here to, to, to save me. No, no, he's already done that 2,000 years ago. The Bible says, once and for all, we have been made holy. Once and for all, once and for all, once and for all, we have been made holy. Hebrews 10.10, 10. check it out. And that's a gift. We receive it by faith. Everybody say, by faith. Everything in the gospel is by faith. I've been justified by faith. I've been saved by faith. I am strong. Let the weak say they are strong. I am strong. Everybody say, I am strong. By faith, you bring it down. You don't have to go up there. But it's nigh thee, even in thy mouth. But you've got to open your mouth. If I will confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, and believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thy shall be saved. This side ain't listening. 
If thou wilt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. If thy, if thy will, if thy will confess, if thy will confess, if thy will confess, it's thy even in thy mouth, if thy will confess. I believe they're getting it. You bring it nigh to you by believing and confessing it. And God has the responsibility to deliver it to you through His Holy Spirit. He imparts to you His righteousness. We have no righteousness of our own. But He imparts, He imputes His righteousness into us. Listen to this. And that righteousness that He imputes into us bears fruits of righteousness. People are trying to do right things. Just receive the righteousness of God and the righteousness of God through the power of the gospel and the power of the Holy Spirit will produce in you fruits of righteousness. I'm trying to find my wallet. See if I got a hundred dollar bill in here. Who, who's waving at me back there? <laughs> look, look at there. Look at, look at there. He's getting ready. Do you think? Do you think I could give that twenty dollar away by my human love? Can you smell that? Oh, hallelujah. Wow! <laughs> what caused me to give my last $20 away? The love of God. Paul says the love of God moves me. Moves me. Moves me. I could see in her eyes that she wanted to buy her husband dinner today. Behave yourself, Bob. I'm trying. Now, you're to set the example, Bob. Be followers of God. God is a giver. When you know that the Spirit of God is working in you, you'll give. You'll give. You'll give love. You'll give strength. You'll give encouragement. You don't talk about anybody. You pray about everybody. When the love of God works in your heart, out of that love that's been put in the heart, Springs generosity, springs love, springs power, springs grace and mercy. Mercy. This young man would stand before the judge one day. And the judge said, son, don't be nervous. You'll get justice. He said, that's what I'm afraid of. You didn't get that. I need mercy. Come on, see, I need mercy. God has given us mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. You'll find it in the power of the gospel. Do not be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God. Release the power by preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Be bold, be courageous. You're sons and daughters of the living God. Your name is written in the last book of God. God chose you before the foundation of the world. Some of you don't believe it. Read Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1 will tell you that. All right, let's finish reading this list now. All right. Wow. That's All right, go to 7. Or who will descend into the pit? That is, to bring Christ up from the dead. How many of you know he's already risen from the dead? As if we could be saved by our own effort. Oh, that's a good one. Hang up there a little bit, Bob. <laughs> you know, I'm really good looking. Who's arguing against that? But I am not saved by my good looks. Now you can't, look at it, look at it. He, I mean, he's, you know, he's a movie star. Another movie star, another movie star, another movie. All of you are movie stars. I got news for you. You cannot be saved by your good looks. 
Well, you know, I, uh, <clears throat> I gave $10 one time to the foreign mission. <laughs> no, <laughs> bless your heart. That's great. Glad to hear that. <laughs> but you're not saved by your works. You're not saved by your good conduct. Well, the Bible tells us it's in the gospel. For by grace are you saved through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. What works can we do to persuade God to save us? While if there were some works that could save us, Jesus Christ would not have had to die on the cross. He settled that in the garden, Lord, if there be any other way. May this cup pass from me. There is no other way. Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. In the book of John, you will read that if someone does not believe that Christ came in the flesh, is an antichrist. Why is so important that we know and believe that Christ came in the flesh? Because there's blood in the flesh. And without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. They thought Christ was just a spirit. Are you following me? If you know the Word of God, you know what I'm talking about. So there had to be a body. God formed a body just like your body, but without sin. That He might shed His blood for every one of us. What is man that God is mindful? What are you? Woman, she says. What are you that God is mindful of you? Hmm? What's she saying? Blessed. Well, you're blessed, but what are you? Yeah, I know you're blessed. I know, but what are you? What are you? What are you? What am I? What are you? That Christ would come all the way down here to die on a cross that you might have eternal life. That all your sins would be forgiven. That one day you will have a glorified body. It's a little rough now, but it gets better after a while. But we get our glorified bodies. The best place to sleep is in the church. That's how I let him sleep. That's all right. He's hearing every word I'm saying. His spirit is recording it. Did you know that you will never die? Christ annulled death at the cross. Now read your Bible. Write me a letter. I'll show you the scriptures. Timothy 1, 10 tells us that. He annulled death. We will never die. Oh, thank God, these bodies will quit breathing. Do you want to take these bodies to heaven? No, sir. <coughs> Young fella, you want to take your body to heaven with you? Not yet. <laughs> you don't have to answer that. I know the answer. You will have a glorified body. And what I like about it, you'll be able to fly. Where's that at? Simple, it's in the Bible. In the twinkling of an eye, we will what? Be caught up into the air where Jesus is, and we'll meet him in the air. How are we going to get up there if we don't know how to fly? You never thought of that, have you? That's what revelation knowledge do for you. You see things in the scripture. Did you get that? In that scripture. The reason I pointed at her, she's one of our ministers. I like for our ministers and deacons and, uh, and uh, uh, the elders to get it in their wives. Where does this say that we will fly? We'll be caught up to meet the Lord on the mountain. No. In the air. Well, how in the world are we going to get up there? Well, we're going to get up there because our bodies will be transformed into a glorified body and we will meet the Lord at Walmart. 
Huh? Balo. In the air. And we will forever be with the Lord. Now, I know in Psalms uh, 90, verse 10, the last part of that Bible says that we will fly away. Remember that scripture? But that's our spirit man. We will live three score and ten. How much is that? Seventy. Right, you're right on the ball. Seventy. But if you want some more misery and some more punishment, you can live to be eighty. Read it. You'll see that in there. So why not pass away at 70? How many is ready to go down? Got one person back there. The teacher was talking to this, this class, his class, and said, how many wants to go to heaven? Everybody, all the kids raised their hand but this one. And after the Sunday school class, the teacher said, son, don't you want to go to heaven? Yes, sir. Well, why didn't you raise your hand? And the little boy says, I thought you meant now. Yeah, we all want to go to heaven next week, but not now. Charles has got his hand up. He's ready now. I'm ready. Oh, y'all want more misery? <laughs> I hope you know your Bible. You say, well, that guy must be. No, you, I'll, I'll challenge you to read your Bible to see if I'm right. I don't say anything unless the Bible says it. Let's look at the scriptures. Oh, who will descend into the pit? That is, to bring Christ. Who will? Will you? know? As from the dead, as if we could be saved by our own efforts. Let's go to the next verse. Catch this now. This is important because I'm teaching you how to procure, how to bring healing, how to bring power into your life. But what does it say? The word of God, the message, God's message in Christ is near you. How near is it to you? On your what? Lips. And where did you get it? From the written word of God. But you got to get it on your lips. Everybody say lips. See, most of you think lips are for kissing. Oh, these lips were made for kissing. Quiet in here. That's how I draw you in. But your lips were made for confessing. Confessing the word of God. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 1, verse 6, that your faith might be energized by acknowledging all the good things that are in Pastor Bob. Was that wrong? That's wrong. It says that your faith will be energized by confessing all the good things that are in you. I'm going to say that again because I don't think some of you heard me. It seems like the Bible says somewhere that Jesus said, Paul said it, you hear but you don't hear. But we're hearing, aren't we? Susan just gave me a sign back there. See, I can read her face. She wants me to stay on the positive. You bring into your life what you think and what you speak and what you believe. And Paul says, I speak what I believe. Well, what do you believe? I hope you believe the gospel. Because if you speak what's in this book, you're going to have power in your life, honey. You're going to have power. Power over the world, the flesh, and the devil. And over your carnal nature. Woo! The gospel of Jesus Christ is so powerful. The devil can stand for it to be on your lips. Everybody say, I'm strong. I'm a child of God. I've been justified. That word justified means just as if you have never sinned. See, we don't understand the power of the blood is so strong that when we accept Christ, 
It totally, absolutely. Give me a word. Transforms. Well, it transforms us, but it totally destroys all the negative powers, and it brings life. There's life. Now, some people say, well, Bob, I just don't see it. Well, you're not believing it. See, when you speak what you believe, what are you speaking? Because what you're speaking and what you're believing, you're going to get more of. Somebody say, ouch. Say, ouch. You have to know how to draw the power of God. Your lips are important. Let's go to that next. Oh, let's move on here. Let's see. Look. <coughs> Isn't it, or on your lip, no, go back to the other one, 8, 10, 8. And in your heart, ooh, wow, is near you on your lips and in your heart. That is the word, the message, the basis and the object of faith which we preach. So it's got to be on, how many of you know out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth what? Speak. So all through the week, what do you speak? That's the Bible. I thought you loved us. I do. That's why I'm speaking truth. What have you been speaking all week? What have you been believing all week? What have you been saying all week? That's why you're weak. <laughs> How many love me now? Let me see. One, two. The rest of you. How many want to know the truth? Amen. See, this is a principle in God's Word. How do you draw off the pages of God that it might operate in my life? How? You know why? We've been married 60 years. You know why? I, my wife and me, are, we're, not just, we're not just in love. We are madly in love. Madly in love. Sonny Bob? Madly in love. I bet this man could say the same thing. Madly in love. Look at his wife's smile. Look at that smile on her face. Look at there. Woo woo. Ha ha. Charles, tell you, you way back there. Tell her. Wish she's up here. Look how she's jumping in the job. You speak, you get what you speak. I constantly go to bed at night. I love you, honey. Oh, yeah, yeah, I love you too. In the morning, we get up. First thing I do, I say, good morning, love, I love you. Good morning, God, I love you. And I look at my precious wife, and I say, I love you, baby. I don't just love her. I'm madly in love. But let me tell you something. I'm in love with her with the agape love, unconditional love. Come on, church, don't shout me down. That's what some problems are in some marriages. Learn to love each other with the agape love, unconditional love. Your hair don't have to be pretty all the time. You don't have to run around the house in your suit. Some of you don't know how to handle that. I know you. I believe in real life. I believe we're real people. Here's what happens. You'll start, all of us start out with the natural love. <laughs> Boy, we like everything we see. I'm in love, I'm in love. I remember when I was 16 years old and I fell in love. How many remember? The, your first love. Look at, look at the hand going. Somebody can't remember far back. Okay, look at a royal back. I like, I like an honest man. A week later, that love, I don't know where it went, but what did I ever see in that girl anyway, you know? Then you fall in love with another one. You remember that? I'm in love. I'm in love. I remember walking across. I was living downtown. I was walking across the, the uh, big park over there, and I was looking into heaven. Oh, God, this is, oh, oh, that is, I, oh, I'm in love. I'm in love. You remember that? You remember, you remember that? Huh? 
Then you really fell in love. Huh? Woo! <laughs> when you fall in love with God, you love everybody. My kids, let me tell you something, when they're bad, I love them. Come on now, church. When my kids are bad, does that alter my love? No. no. I love them even when they're bad. But I want you to straighten up and stop that nonsense. You hear? I love you. But I love you. Our love for our kids is not based on their conduct. My goodness, we'd never love them hardly, would we? <laughs> huh? Because sometimes they'll embarrass you. Like your pastor sometimes, I embarrass you sometimes. Love you, son. I love these kids. I love them. Sometimes I see what they're doing when their mommy's not looking, but I still love them. Can we understand that? And if you come to that place in your life because you've been born again and the love of God's been shed in your heart and you love people out of that love, man, a lot of your problems won't be around anymore. I'm talking about a copy love. Now, I know some of you don't know about that, but I know about it and some of you do. All right, our next verse. Notice what it says. Time's moving fast. I've got to quit. I'll let you go in another hour. Because, <clears throat> because, if you're, it, because if you acknowledge, here we go to the lips again, confess, and confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord, and in your heart believe, a heave to, trust, and rely on the truth that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. That's why we invite people to come up, to confess with their lips. Confess their, with their lips in front of people. Jesus is my Lord and Savior. Some of you need to stand up sometime. Just say, i got a confession I want to make. I want to make it with my lips. I don't have to bring him down here. I don't have to dig him up out of the grave. No, it's nigh thee, even in my mouth. Jesus is my Lord and Savior. He died for me. All my sins are forgiven. Hallelujah. Blessed is the man. Envious is the man and woman whose sins have been forgiven. And if that don't excite you, the truth has not got into you yet. I guarantee you. I'm trying to find out who I could give a, a million dollars to. Now look up, some of you coming alive already. Look at it, she raised her hand. If I gave you a hundred dollars, would you would you run around this church and dance? <laughs> Somebody give her a hundred dollars. Let's see what she's gonna do. Listen, I'm giving you something better than $100. I'm giving you something that's eternal from God Almighty. And if that don't jar you, you come up here at the altar and get on your knees and start praying. Because you hooked up to the wrong hose. You hooked up to the wrong message. We're talking about a gospel that has power in it. That lets you know, what is man that God is mindful of you? What are you that God is mindful of you? Think about that. Little old me. He's mindful of me. He's mindful of you. That's powerful. Ah, man. Let's finish. Look at that. Go to the next verse. And we're going to move it. And we're going to quit here now. 10-10. Ten, ten. For with the heart a person believes. We're not talking about the head knowledge. He used to trust in, rely on Christ, and so is justified, declared righteous, acceptable to God, and with the mouth he confesses, declares openly, speaks out freely his faith, and confirms this salvation. Did you get that? That's how you confirm your salvation when you speak it. Meditate on that verse a little bit. For well, with the heart a person believes. Gosh, I thought you believed with your head. Well, that's involved. I mean, that's there too. Trust it, right? Trust 
So how do you bring this salvation into your life? By confessing that Jesus Christ is Lord and by believing in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. And folks, let me tell you something, you can't do it unless the Holy Spirit convicts you of your sin and lets you know that's true. That's why it takes the Holy Spirit. When I was saved, I was seated, I was seated probably right here, not in this chair, but in this little Baptist church, 50-some years ago. The preacher wasn't preaching. He was given an invitation. And the Spirit of God got a hold of me. It was almost like he lifted me out of the chair and brought me up. And he's making the announcements. And I looked at him. He said, yes, sir, can I help you? I said, yes, sir, I want to be saved. Explain that. It's a miracle. God is in the miracle business by saving people's souls. We're not talking about belonging to some church or some organization. We're talking about an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. You know that you know that you know that you know that you know him. And brother, you'll sing, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine, perfect submission. Both of you know it today. You want to be healed, start confessing healing scriptures. Believing in your heart. Are you weak in your faith? Listen, nurture that inner man. Come to Sunday school. Will any problem you got back there in the men's class, if you don't mind, tell us about it, and brother, we'll give you the answer right there in the Word of God. Simple is not complicated. Very simple. We are the most blessed people in the world. Blessed and happy and envious is the man and the woman whose sins and transgressions have been forgiven. Are you really happy? Are you really happy? When's the last time you confessed Jesus Christ as your Savior to somebody? Hmm? Turn it by that person and do it. Go ahead. Just do it. Your faith will be energized. Go ahead right now. Just go ahead. Say, Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior, and I believe in my heart that God raised him. Go ahead. Go ahead. Now, you can't do it. You can't do it if you're not saved. But you could get saved by doing it. Because <laughs> here, the Holy Spirit will look at your heart. He'll see your heart. He knows everybody in their heart. He knows everything about you. And when you really mean it, he'll come in and live in you. He's not going to come and live in somebody that don't want him. Come, Lord Jesus. Let my body be your temple and use me for thy glory. I hope that's all of your heart's desire this morning. We only started on this message a little bit, but we'll be continuing it as we move along because I only brought five books of pages on this subject. <laughs> Hallelujah. I would like for our leaders to come up, anybody that, that wants to give their heart to Christ this morning, you come up and talk to them. If you need prayer, they'll pray for you. So the people that are going to be water baptized, the women will be over on my right, and the men will be over to my left here. And so the men will take care of this up here where we can get ready for our water baptism. If I offended anybody, I'm sorry. But I want you to know right up front, I'm a man of truth. I love truth. I don't want no hanky-panky. How many wants hanky-panky? I don't want no hanky. I want to know the truth. Because, right. Brother Christ, Jesus is coming. Amen. And I'm looking for him every day. Amen. Amen. Love everybody. All right, I'm going to get my bath. All right, all those will be water baptized.